Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Sam, for taking that snapshot. And thank you, Joe D'Alessandro, for having such amazing hair and also doing such <laughs> work for the city. We'll talk about your hair in another conversation. I have questions. I want to know everything. Um, but today's conversation is about travel. And it is a serious and a somber and a difficult conversation. Um, but as we know, where there's darkness, there is light. And so we are also going to talk about the future and how we're going to come out swinging. Um, thank you all those who are tuning in now. My name is Manny Acutio. I'm the owner of Manny's. It's a small business in the Mission District in San Francisco um, that brings together people in person around civic programming. And like most other small businesses, mine is shut and closed and not open for business. But just because the place is closed, we felt that the work needs to continue. And so we brought this civic programming to you through these Manny Super Civic Cyber Conversations. Um, this is the second of four today. Uh, and two quick notes for you. If you have a question for Joe D'Alessandro or on the topic of how the stopping of travel or the impact of travel is affecting San Francisco's economy, you can type that question in at any time in the little Q&A box. And also please feel free to tag us at Welcome to Manny's. Um, first, I'd like everyone that's joining the call to press the raise hand button so I can see who's here and say hello to some of you. I see Linda and Nick and Peter, Lori, Catherine, Robin, Laura, Zeke, Matt, Shay, hi Shay, Kathy, Charles, tons of people are on this call. Obviously, this is an issue that a lot of people are interested in. Deborah Walker, hello, Mary Ishida, Renee Berger, Marcy, wonderful. So many familiar faces and new friends. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Let's get to the topic of Han. Joe D'Alessandro, you are the president and CEO of SF Travel. Wow, this must be really, really tough time for you. Can you first just go ahead and tell everyone what San Francisco Travel does? What is it that you do and who do you represent in this conversation? Yeah, San Francisco Travel is a nonprofit organization. It's uh, been established about 110 years ago. And our mission is to market San Francisco for events, meetings, leisure tourism, conventions around the world. We're the entity that tells the San Francisco story um, to anybody that listens. We book conventions that come to Moscone, we, we market events from Pride to Chinese New Year's, um, attractions from Golden Gate Park to Alcatraz. So our, our real mission is to build the, the economy of San Francisco and Northern California, the Bay Area through travel and tourism. Got it. And I guess my first question to you is, is travel still happening? Are people still coming to San Francisco? as tourists like is what's like what have you what are you seeing is that just not happening at all or is it happening but at a reduced amount it's really not happening at all um typically in a month like uh, april we would have 90 percent occupancy in our hotels and accommodations in san francisco and this april we'll be lucky to have six percent occupancy um the people that are staying in hotels are here for critical reasons or essential business um but the reasons they come to San Francisco in large part um, are, are not here right now. I mean, the, the restaurants, the shops, the entertainment, the arts, the mm -hmm. museums, the performances, um, you name it, they're closed. And, um, and until they start to reopen again, I think the, the economy of San Francisco will still suffer. It's travel and tourism is the number one sector in our economy and has been for a very long time. And it really drives so much uh, about what San Francisco is about. I think a lot of people myself included didn't know that right you would think that tech is the biggest source of san francisco's local economy um but that's just not true at all it is actually our tourism and our and our entertainment industry so can you tell us a little bit about what what share of the san francisco economy is occupied by travel and tourism yeah to give you an idea um last year travelers and visitors to san francisco spent about to over $10 billion in our economy. Wow. And they employed about 90,000 San Franciscans directly in travel and tourism jobs. And that doesn't include like tourists that will go into a restaurant um, because those, the restaurants are employed also by locals, but these are directly uh, employed people in the travel and tourism industry. They live in every neighborhood in San Francisco and uh, they really help make San Francisco the personality of what it is today. Because when a visitor comes here, they don't go to a theme park. They go to the neighborhoods that we live in. They go to the same restaurants, the same places that we go to as uh, San Franciscans. So they, they help to maintain that quality of life that we enjoy. We saw that a lot at Manny's. You know, Manny's is on Valencia. And Valencia during the week is not super packed. But on the weekends, you get a lot of people coming in. 
Um, and we, I, we served cappuccinos and food and programming to people from all over the world right. at my restaurant shop in the corner of 16th and Valencia. And so I saw firsthand the cosmopolitan nature of San Francisco through all the travelers that came in. Um, do you think that this pausing in the economy and the shutdown and then, and then hopefully the, the, the reopening of it soon will change the way San Franciscans understand and think about how important travel and tourism is to our local economy? You know, likely, yes, because we're already learning that right now. We're learning that the hotel tax contributes, you know, $450 million into the city general fund and, and travelers pay about $800 million of taxes that if they're not here, we have to pay to keep up the basic services that we have from parks and schools and roads and, and all that kind of stuff. So once, if the tourists go away, we have to figure out either a way to pay for those uh, services ourselves or to discontinue things that we love about San Francisco. So it's not only that they help keep the arts alive and they help keep restaurants alive and small business alive, their taxes help pay for so much of the basic services that we as San Franciscans enjoy. I didn't, I didn't feel a lot of anti-tourism sentiment in, in, I've only lived in San Francisco about seven, eight years. Like, you know, there's some cities like Paris that like are famous for like being kind of iffy on their tourists. I didn't really feel like we've got a problem of, you know, we don't like our visitors, but I do feel like this moment of reckoning will, will probably remind us of uh, how appreciative we should be that we are such a destination for so many people around the world. Okay, so I took a little, oh, did you have something you wanted to add to that? I was going to say that it's like 93% of San Franciscans think that tourism is really important to our economy because when tourists come here, they don't act like they're going to a theme park in Florida. They act like us. They want to be like us. They want to disappear in San Francisco and yeah. experience San Francisco like we do. So we don't even know by and large who the tourists are compared to who our neighbors are. I mean, other than Pier 39, I don't know like where, what is a place that only tourists go that locals don't really seem to go to. Like there isn't. Everyone goes to the ferry building, you know, yeah. like I get like everyone's in Alamo Square Park too. Like there's not, it's not yeah. like a lot of places where like there are whole chunks of the city that are just tourists. I mean, it is right. really mushed up, which is the beauty of San Francisco. Right. Um, so I took a little gander at your website before this and noticed that you guys have actually provided opportunities for people to still kind of travel to San Francisco without being here. Can you talk a little bit about how you're trying to adapt and still bring people to San Francisco without physically bringing them here? Yeah, so what we're trying to do is keep people engaged with San Francisco, keep people um, dreaming of coming to San Francisco when um, even if they can't come right now. So we're doing a lot of things. I encourage anybody to go to sftravel.com and experience it from themselves. We're encouraging San Franciscans to take pictures outside of their window when they're, when they're sheltering in place in San Francisco and show the world what our neighborhoods look like. Tell stories about what their favorite things to do in San Francisco are. If, even if they're going for a walk and in, in, in social uh, distancing right now, um, how, you know, kind of what their experience of San Francisco is. Tell those stories because people around the world are locked in their homes right now and they want to do something. They want to get out. They want to explore. And San Francisco is one of those places that we want to keep top of mind. So when we can start traveling again, they'll come to San Francisco. Do you, I was just, I was going to say that I've been so impressed with my neighborhood and the Castro and Twin Peaks because every night at eight o'clock, the entire valley is just erupting in pot. People are going out on their patios and they're banging their pots and they're hooting and hollering. They're switching on and off their lights. And it's a really beautiful sight to behold. And I've been very proud and I've been, I've been recording that and pushing it out. Um, I was going to ask you, do you feel like since we sheltered in place first, people will be more comfortable coming to us once this is over because they felt like San Francisco had its shit together? You know, we're still certainly telling that story. And I think the answer is yes. If you look at the curve of other parts of the world that have gone way up there in the, in the crisis that have become as a result of that, you'll be very impressed with San Francisco and see our numbers that we were early, we were fast, and the crisis has not um, uh, materialized like it has in other places. So we took it seriously and we're going to take it seriously coming out of here. We're going to make sure that San Francisco is a positive and also a safe experience for people when they come here. So I saw on sfgate.com today, which everyone should subscribe to the Chronicle first, but if you're not, uh, sfgate's another website you can go to. And they said that some people are actually estimating that the hotels might see a bounce back as early as June. 
what are you what are you hoping for and what are you expecting in terms of when we might be able to see some bounce back in terms of our tourism and our travel and our hotels so you know we would love to see it bounce back this summer in in full glory and and support so many of our events and activities but as you know you know, Pride has been canceled, all sorts of other events have been canceled. So we know the reality is, and many conventions have been canceled or postponed. So we know the reality is it's gonna be a slow comeback. Um, estimating that we're not gonna see numbers like 2019 until maybe 2023. So it may be a while. Um, it all depends on how well we do with the, with the virus, how well we do in, in, in keeping it at bay and making sure that it doesn't come back again. You know, if we if we get out too early um, and we have another recurrence of it, it'll make things even worse. So, you know, we're going to see a small return this year. And, and we think it's going to be a lot of regional visitors, visitors from California and Northern California, Southern California. And it's going to take time for some of the international visitors to get back. We need the air service to come back into SFO and we need people to feel comfortable tra leaving their country again. And 64% of all tourism spending in San Francisco is from international visitors. The, the largest percentage of any major city in the country. So that's really important to our economy. Why do you think that is? Why do you think we attract so many international visitors? I think it's the iconic symbolism of San Francisco. And, and by that, I mean not only the Golden Gate Bridge that people know, it's an instant recognizable landmark around the world, but it's also the symbolism of what San Francisco's expression of freedom is. It's, it's kind of liberation uh, of, of what San Francisco is about, how we're kind of unique compared to the rest of the country when they hear stories of all this stuff that's going on in DC and they say, San Francisco's doing this, they're, you know, they're you know, the first city to legalize gay marriage in the country and all these things. That's really important talking about the DNA of San Francisco. So if you wanna come here and say, what's the city about? Why are the people here so different that they're letting these things happen? I wanna experience that, I wanna be a part of that. It's like Marshall Beach on a sunny day maybe. <laughs> exactly. So are you hearing from any of your, ho so first question is, um, how far out have things been canceled? I mean, what is the farthest out that you've seen a major event be canceled or postponed? So we're seeing conventions being canceled through the summer now, um, starting even into the fall. Um, I don't know if you saw yesterday, but in Germany, Oktoberfest was canceled, and that's what? in September and October. That's what? the major event in Germany that was canceled this year. So, um, you know, we're just going to have to play it by ear a little bit and see kind of what we what happens um you know yeah. california has done really good but the governor has to decide on when the state kind of reopens and what the 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 protocols will be and the mayor is going to have to say it for for san francisco and we're not going to be stupid like some other cities in the country that are going to be open too soon and hopefully not cause a catastrophe but make people nervous um i think san francisco is going to be smart again and california frankly is too and and be cautious about how we open and reopen i saw i saw beta breakers was pushed to september 20th do you think it might get pushed again. Who knows? I mean, hopefully September is going to be a good month for us. I hope I'm so. keeping my fingers crossed. So if um, we're going to get somber for a second, if you want to do something really depressing, everyone, you can go to sftravel.com and you can take, you can go take, you can take a look at all the uh, updates on what is happening and what is not happening, what's been canceled and which museums are open. And it's, it's a very sad list. And one of the things that it, that it did for me was, and I got kind of emotional before this call, was it reminded me of, all, of how amazing San Francisco's cultural life really is. When you look at all the things that typically happen between March and you know, August, from Outside Lands to Pride to Beta Breakers um, and all the museums, and how many amazing things there is to do and how much has been taken away from us. It's a really sad, it's a sad thing to actually, if you, you wrap your mind around it, all the museums that are closed. So I wanna ask you, Joe, about what you think the long-term effects might be. Let's talk about San Franciscans for a second. On having all of our precious cultural life objects being taken away from us, how do you think that's gonna affect us as San Franciscans once we emerge from this? You know, the physical San Francisco will always be what it is. We have the hills and the bays and the architecture and the buildings and the homes. That's gonna still be here. What I worry about is the personal San Francisco, the individual San Francisco, the people that really make this city different than everywhere else um, and their well-being during this period. A lot of people aren't working right now. 
um, a lot of businesses will not reopen, unfortunately. You know, we're estimates of restaurants that maybe 25% of the restaurants in San Francisco may never reopen again. This may take some time. That's going to be very hard for all of us. San Francisco is not unique. This is a phenomenon that's going to be felt around the world. Um, you don't have pandemics very often. And um, this is the first one in the modern age that uh, has had a global impact like this. But San Francisco will change, as will the world. But you know what? We're unique in San Francisco. And I believe that we can rebuild San Francisco in a very cool way. We can learn from some of the mistakes we've made in the past. We can kind of recreate some of that spirit of San Francisco that we love so much and really come out of this, the San Francisco that we can be super proud of again. And San Francisco that means so much to not only us, but to people around the world who want to come here and figure out, why is this place so unique? Why is this place so special? We can all be a part of recreating that San Francisco when we come back. I'm going to ask you how we do that in a second. But first, I just want to tell the, ask the participants who are tuned in. And thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, if you have a question for Joe um, about the economic effects of all this on our, on our city uh, or anything, you can type it in now to the Q&A box. How can San Franciscans be a part of our economic recovery, specifically as it relates to the importance of travel and tourism and this, this big piece of our city's economy. How can we help us all come back from this? So one of the ways we can do it is that when we start to recover, spend your money home, spend your yeah. money locally. Yes. Go, to, go to a museum here in San Francisco, go to an arts performance here, go listen to some live music in San Francisco, go to a restaurant in San Francisco, support yeah. that quality of life here locally so that we can get our feet back on the ground. And once we get our feet back on the ground and once we get the neighborhoods active and once we get the, the, the nonprofits and the arts groups active, then we can go out and venture beyond San Francisco. But let's stabilize San Francisco. Let's support those businesses that are so important, those, those entities that are so important, those events that are so important to us. Let's make sure that they don't fail. Let's, let's limit the, the, the hemorrhaging on those so that we can support those so they can stay alive till we get the visitors back in to help supporting those. That's one clear way that we can really help cultivate that culture of San Francisco that's so important. And you know, Manny, one way you can do it right now is a lot of the museums and stuff, even performing groups, you can go to their websites, you can find them on sftravel.com and see what's on. You can take a virtual tour of these museums. Think about that stuff that you want to do as soon as you can, as soon as they reopen, so that we can go back in there and support them. And you know, if you're able, you can become a season pass holder of the symphony or you can join the exploratorium as a, as a season pass holder and, you know, provide some much needed capital into these institutions that are not getting the ticket revenue that they would otherwise be getting. Um, what about asking family to make trips here once we're open? Do you, do you suggest that? Absolutely. You know, one of the things that people uh, really love to do is invite their friends and family to San Francisco. And it's a great way to do it. It's a great way to share your San Francisco with, with people that are close to you and people that are important to you. It's, it's one of the very important things that people love about San Francisco. You know, what's interesting is that we survey visitors that come to San Francisco. Last year, we surveyed visitors. 97% of all visitors who came to San Francisco said they wanted to come back. That's, that's unheard of in other cities and other parts of the world. 97% of our visitors say that they want to come back. So invite your friends and family, get them to here. It's the light. It is. I'm going to ask you about, I'm going to ask you to retell, tell me, to tell me about as much as you can remember the moment that you fell in love with this city. <laughs> That's interesting. I grew up, uh, my grandparents immigrated to San Francisco a long time ago from Italy. I grew up in Sacramento. And um, when I was in high school, my, my parents didn't know this, but I would hitchhike to San Francisco from Sacramento to explore the city as a teenager. What? And that's when I fell in love with the city, is just going around the city, not really knowing it very well. I had family here, but I didn't really know it that well. But being a 16, 17-year-old kid from Sacramento, coming to the big city, I knew my whole life that my goal was to get to San Francisco. That place was magic. And I knew that I wanted to get here. And that has always held this, held this magical place in my heart. Did you go to the Castro as a 16-year-old? I um, don't remember going to the Castro. You know, I went to North Beach because I had family there. But I would explore the city. Maybe I did go to the Castro. I don't remember. Do you remember one particular trip while you were here and, and something that may have happened or a place that you went into that, that, that's, that, still, that still burns true in your memory? You know, I have a number of those memories, but I remember being a kid and walking down Powell Street 
and seeing an elderly woman try to get on a cable car and you know not at the turnaround but kind of more up the hill and she was struggling to get on the cable car and I went over there and helped kind of push her up so she can get her holding and get on the cable car and that was a memory that was just so magical because a cable car that you know that just doesn't happen and just just kind of the society coming together and just her thanking me and everything like that that was just a little magical snapshot of a of time that really kind of contributed to my love for San Francisco from my earliest days my first time in San Francisco was on an eighth grade trip in my Orthodox Jewish yeshiva. And I, even then, I was, so it was eighth grade, I knew I was a baby homosexual. I was sure of it. And they wouldn't let us spend the night in San Francisco because it was so, you know, it was San Francisco. That's like, you know, dangerous. You can't do that. So we had, a, we had, we had dinner in the one rat kosher restaurant, which is on Grant in Chinatown. Uh, and we did a little bit of sightseeing, went to the Golden Gate Bridge. But I remember this feeling of like, somewhere in this city, there are a lot of gay people. And I remember like looking, I had like long shaggy hair, my big yarmulke. And I remember looking around being like, which one of them are gay? Because my people are here somewhere. I don't know where they are, but this is where they're supposed to be. And I never, I never, I never was able to go to the Castro. And then when I moved back here the summer of 2010, my I turned 21 that summer and I, I celebrated my 21st birthday in the Castro and it just kind of really, yeah, I have, I've had, I have a lot, we talked That's about- That's a great memory. I was more afraid to go to the Castro because I wasn't out then when I was a teenager and I was uh, afraid somebody was gonna see me and, and kind of then every, I would just was terrified. Well, yeah, and I mean, you had family close to San Francisco so maybe you would have gotten back to Sacramento. Yeah. Um, I wanna ask you about your first night out, when this is when when that's going to be allowed, where are you going to go on your first night? Where are you going to spend your first San Francisco dollars uh, once shelter in place is lifted? Tell me about your 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 night. So, you know, my favorite thing to do in San Francisco is walk through our neighborhoods and go eat somewhere. And um, and usually it's kind of a neighborhood restaurant. It's a smaller place where I've gotten to know the owners. And um, that's probably going to be my very first thing that I that I, I can do is go back out and experience that incredibly unique quality of food that we have in every single neighborhood of San Francisco. And, um, and without, without question, that's going to be my first thing. Okay, we have a lot of audience questions. We're going to get to them right now. Brian Kolber asks, how is San Francisco poised to recover compared to us other destinations? Well, um, it's interesting. Uh, we're so heavily dependent on the international traveler. That's going to hurt us in, in, the, in the short term. Um, uh, and long term, we're going to be good. I think on the business side of it, on business travel, we're going to be we're going to fare pretty well because we have a a large business uh, community in the Bay Area that travels. So so certain segments are going to come back earlier than other segments. Um, we've got a plan that we're going to really focus on kind of closer in markets in the beginning, and um, and then as more time gets uh, passes and more air service returns to San Francisco, then we'll go to the uh, more distant markets, East Coast and and international. Got it. Elaine Wallace asks, how about Salesforce and Oracle conventions? Any update on those? So, um, yeah, Oracle is not happening here this year. Um, Salesforce is happening so far this fall. And um, the convention may, Dreamforce may be slightly different. They may reorganize it. They may uh, do something different depending on what the protocol is when that happens. So we'll have to see how many people can be in a room. We'll have to see what the requirements are on masks and all that kind of stuff, but uh, but we're prepared to address all of those protocols when the city reopens again. Uh, Jason has a question for you, Joe. Can you share your thoughts relative to the conversational conversation and alignment between SF Travel, the city of San Francisco, and state of California as it pertains to when it makes sense for SF to host major conventions and events again? Yeah, we're working very closely with both the city and the state on, on this issue. Um, um, I serve on both Visit California's board of directors. I'm on the Economic Recovery Task Force here in, in San Francisco. And we're paying attention. You know, we're not going to uh, want to do anything that's contrary to what the state and the, the, the experts, the medical experts and the scientific community tell us is what their recommendation to do. We're not going to be like other places and prematurely doing this. 
So we're gonna be working on the protocols on our public buildings, also on our private buildings. We're gonna tell attractions and museums that we've talked about, like give them ideas of some ways that they can practice these protocols and make the experience positive for the visitors. So we're gonna be very closely working with the state and the city to make sure when we open, we're gonna open safely, securely, and make it a positive experience for everybody. Got it. Um, question is, when do you anticipate the visitor center in Moscone Center opening back up? So right now, uh, we have a couple of small groups planned uh, in the, the fall, excuse me, in the summer. And so it's all going to have to be, once we get the city reopened and kind of understands what the protocol is, then we'll be able to kind of give a better idea of when everything else can open. Courtney asks, what businesses do you anticipate returning first and which ones would be last? Do you see working from home lasting longer for larger companies? That's a really good question. And I think the businesses that will return first are the neighborhood businesses um, where people live. Um, so especially because I think people will start to go back in the office, but I think this idea of working remotely is gonna be more common and a lot more companies are gonna be using it. I think a lot of companies I'm hearing are gonna be maybe do in the office two or three days a week and then people can work remotely the other days. So I think where people, the businesses that will come back first are those in the neighborhoods, the restaurants, the bars, the shops in the neighborhoods where people can walk to and people already know and feel comfortable. The ones that um, are more in areas that are heavily businessed, I think those will struggle a little bit more in the beginning to come back, but those will come back eventually. All right, Peter Gamez asks, uh, the first question you asked Peter, we've already gotten to, but the second one is, will you, Joe, run Beta Breakers with him if it happens in September? Only if we coordinate costumes. What will you dress as? Whatever Peter wants to do, I'll take the lead on, on Peter. He, he always takes, likes to take the lead when we dance. So, uh, Peter, yeah, so. you've got all the power. You've, you have all the cards in your hand. So use it wisely. Make him, make him pay for it. <laughs> Catherine Horton, FYI, I believe San Francisco Travel just did a press release today on how you can make iconic San Francisco cocktails at home. Oh, my God, I need a cocktail. <laughs> um, also for Joe, thoughts on the future of airlift travel in and out of San Francisco, particularly on major airlines. In light that it looks like Virgin Atlantic may not make it through this time. Yeah, how is airlift travel going to be affected by all this, do you think? You know, that's a big, that's a big issue for us. Um, I saw a survey recently that uh, the International Air Traffic Association predicted that maybe up to 25% of the world's airlines will not survive this. Um, you know, San Francisco is a big market. It's a big market for both business travel and leisure travel. So we feel that we will do well coming back. Um, we believe that, uh, d you know, domestically is where the air travel will start to come back. But we're also hearing now from some of our carriers from Asia and Europe that are starting to talk about when they can start service again uh, to San Francisco. Believe it or not, we have no nonstop passenger services right now from San Francisco to Europe, which is unheard of. You know, two, three months ago, we had 40 different flights, you know, and now we have zero. Um, we need to see those get back, not only for us to go there, but for them to come here. So that's going to be really important to stimulate the economy. Also, I don't want to shade out any other airports in any other American cities, but they're all shitty and ours is amazing. Absolutely. I didn't say that, but I said it. We have the most amazing, clean, incredible airport. The food is actually good in our airport, which I can't say for any other airport in this country. Sorry. Shay asks, even before COVID, we were losing some conferences due to the street conditions. What ways can we win them back? Great question, Shay. It is a great question, Shay. Thank you. Um, so one of the goals that we have is working with the city and the business community to make the cleanliness protocols of San Francisco that's going to come out as a result of this be permanent. So that we're going to take all sorts of steps to make sure that when San Francisco reopens, we're going to take these protocol steps to make it cleaner than it's been in a long time and make those part of our permanent culture. Because the cleaner a city is, the less likely the spread of a virus like COVID-19. So it only makes, it makes health sense and it makes business sense and it makes, you know, kind of our morale as a city uh, more upbeat that clean of the city can be. So that's going to be really important, I think, for, for all of us, for a health reason and also an economic reason. I really hope that's what happens. Joel. So do I. I Will the pandemic lower the typically high hotel rates where more non-corporate people can afford to travel to San Francisco for a vacation? Well, you know, so many of the, the costs of San Francisco, as we all know it, are super expensive to own and operate a hotel. So the rates may go down a little bit, but the fact of the matter is, is that these are businesses just like a restaurant that need to make a profit to stay open. Um, and uh, so I don't see huge variances. 
Uh, there may be small, there may be incentives to get people to come in on weekends or whatever the case may be, but it's not going to see a free fall because these are, we have very high costs to operate in uh, here in San Francisco. And we did talk to Kevin Carroll, who's the ED of the Hotel Council uh, yesterday. Oh my God, I don't even know what time it is, what day it is. I don't know what year we're in. I think I talked to Kevin yesterday, maybe it was last week, I don't know. But one thing you all can do in the, in the short term, and Robin uh, is asking about how we can participate to fill our accommodations in the near term, is if you are financially able, have a staycation in the San Francisco hotel once you're able and you know, give some money, a lot of the hotel industry um, directly employs 25,000 people in the Bay Area. Yep. So have a staycation in a hotel. But to answer Robin's question, how can we participate in filling our accommodations in the near term to help folks out? I think, I think what you just said, uh, Manny, is a, is a really good one. Uh, have a staycation. Be pampered a little bit. We're going to be stuck in our homes for a while. And um, go to a place, go to a hotel where you can be, get pampered, get you know, room service, get whatever the hotel offers and, you know, be a part of that. Also go out to eat when you're doing that. Enjoy San Francisco like a, like a, a visitor does, like a tourist does. The bottom line is we get, we need to get our San Franciscans back employed. And that's how we're going to get our economy going again. We need to get people working in restaurants and in, in museums and in hotels and everything like that. Get our, get our, get our neighbors back working again so that we have money to spend to go out and enjoy San Francisco and other places. Got it. Jason Beckham says, thanks and keep on rocking. Jason, thank you so much. I don't know who you are, but I appreciate it. Um, so uh, someone whose name I don't know, B, any opinion or news regarding whether relief for lodging or other hospitality specific businesses will be coming? We don't know. Um, you know, the focus right now is uh, small business and, and, uh, and, and the, the lifeblood of San Francisco are small businesses. And um, we really want to see everything that can be done to help stabilize and support the small businesses that really um, employ so many people in San Francisco and really are the life and blood of our neighborhood. So that's the priority right now. And, and hopefully that continues to be the priority of, of keeping the small business community alive. And Matt has a question, which is basically like, listen, don't hotels and airlines and restaurants and attractions already do all the promoting to visitors? Why do we even need an SF travel to, 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 to bring people to San Francisco? Do, do, don't they do all the work themselves? I think this is a leading question. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Uh, um, you know, the bottom line is, is just like any product, if you're not top of mind, um, people buy something else. I mean, you know, the, the most well-known products in the world, whether it's, you know, Disney or Coca-Cola has to market themselves. Otherwise, people are going to think about other things. The most visited cities in the world, Paris and London and Rome, have to continually market themselves. Otherwise, somebody's going to go somewhere else. So we have to. We're, we compete with the entire world. When a visitor in London is thinking about where they could go, they're thinking about, well, I can go to Sydney, I can go to Tokyo, I can go to San Francisco. We have to convince them that San Francisco is the choice that they should make. How do you do that? Like, what do you say to them? We tell the stories. How are you, um, and, how are you marketing San Francisco to the world? I mean, that's a big question, but like, yeah. what, what's your selling point? So it depends on who we talk to and it depends on what they're looking for. I mean, we're dealing with social media and markets it, you know, around the country and we have around the world, we have our offices in 14 different markets around the world who talk to people in China through social media means that they use only in China, that they don't necessarily use in the United States. We tell stories that be relevant to the Chinese community, what they're interested in in China. We do the same thing in Brazil. We do the same thing in Europe. So it's, the, it's all relevant to the market for what they're looking for. People in some markets are looking for the culinary experience. People in some markets are looking for the arts experience. So we wanna be very specific about what people are interested in in those markets and tell the stories, the unique stories about what San Francisco has to offer in those markets. We have a lot more questions, but we run a tight ship here at Manny's. And so we are gonna uh, just close it out real quick. Before we end, I just wanna point everyone to Manny's is link in the chat box. Operator, if you don't mind putting the join it link in the chat box for everyone to click on, that would be great. Uh, if you go to joinit.org slash o slash Manny's, you will arrive at the Manny's sponsorship page. And we are asking everyone to become a sponsor. It's $36 a month. Um, we're trying to get 36 sponsors this week and there's a lot of people on this call and so we could do it today. Uh, to help me and my small business continue to operate and do the work that we need to do, to make it through this long and slow recovery. So please go into the chat box, click on the link, joinit.org slash o slash mannies. You can cancel anytime, but we do need your help to make it through this. You know, I also want to thank my team over here, Sam, Ram, and Jupiter for helping us out. 
Um, and Joe, take us home. Tell us how it's going to be okay. Close us out today by giving, painting the vision of how, what is the return going to look and feel like? Tell me it's going to be okay, Joe. You know, Manny, it's going to be okay. San Francisco has gone through some pretty challenging times in its histories, from natural disasters to pandemics to wars to the AIDS epidemic. We've come through, and we will come through on this one too. We come through with our own unique personality, and it's up to all of us as San Franciscans to make sure what comes through is a San Francisco that we can all be proud of, and we can all be something that we can look forward to future generations. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you so much to you all for tuning in. I love you. I don't. I haven't been able to see you, but I'm giving you an air hug right now, and I appreciate you for tuning in. And let's all bond together to to bring San Francisco back and support the city by the bay that we love so much. All right. Thank you, Joe, and have a good rest of your day. Thank Bye. you. Bye. -bye.